Okay, and here it is. I think we finally got pretty much where we need to be with our sim settings. Uh, we've got really nice breakup now on this leading edge here, which is you know right in our face. So that's pretty important. And we're not tearing apart all of these tendrils here anymore in the back because they're not moving very fast. We also have a little bit of movement now from the little the velocity that we added in. Uh, again, making the particles contribution to the density smaller. It's all come together quite nicely. Um, the remaining issue that it still has, and it is an issue, is stuff like this. See here on the right, this kind of, I kind of like what I called strata before when we we're dealing with particles. It's because it's like puff, 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 and you can really see it. And you can see it in a couple places. It's there mainly, that's the main one. But I can see it here too, this feature that comes down here, especially at this stage in its development. Uh, you can even see it in other places too, like here along the edge, although that one's not so bad. Uh, so you can see it here and there. So what is that? Um, it's probably really, it's just the collider. It's just the actual you know, piece of rigid body collision moving through the air. Like if I look at frame 17, so I'll go find frame 17, and we go see, here's the colliding volume. And you know, there you go. It's that chunk is sitting in the middle of, actually I should look at the uh, actual regular collider thing here. There we go. So this chunk is sitting inside of this. So it's probably pushing out um, the smoke here and there. So there's two ways to fix this. The quick and dirty way of fixing this is simply to delete this out. So again, on frame 17, for example, you could literally go up to here, because this is the thing that makes our colliders. We can just look at our incoming pieces and just say, kind of like how we did before, I could say, you know, go in my selection mode, make sure I'm in point selection mode, click on this thing, make sure it's selecting by name, and literally identify it and delete it. I mean, it's not it's being a jerk right now. Sometimes you gotta like close the, yeah, yeah, very good. You gotta close the viewport and make it again when it starts to act weird. But um, in any case, so coming back to here, as I was saying, open this up, select point mode, this thing. Set this to name, and now I can select it, delete it, and we still see a little bit because of the, the background, you know, the show this in the background thing. But there you go, now it's gone. So if it's gone, then of course it won't make the volumes for it either. If it's there, it makes the volumes for it. So that's what's going on. You can just probably target the two or three pieces that you're noticing that for and delete them and then resim it and call it a day. Technically though, the more correct answer is have Pyro run more subframes or sub steps, I should say so that it doesn't jump from here to here on any given frame, but it jumps from here to halfway between that on the sub-step and then on the next sub-step to here. So by having it you know, exist in more places along this streak, that should happen less. So for every increased sub-step we do, uh, that will go away. So the nice thing about doing the sub-steps way is that your sim will usually look slightly nicer anyway for having sub-steps. Uh, and we can knock them all out at once, and we just will know that it's just more accurate overall. So this sim that I've been running has been taking like 15 minutes to run. I think I said 10 before. It was actually more like 15. Um, so I can kind of afford it, I think, to, you know, that's not that bad. If we do two sub steps instead of one, it will take twice as long, which is a half hour instead. It's not a huge deal, especially not to do one last sim anyway. So, in keeping with that, jump into our DOP network here, find your solver, get a simulation, or rather advanced, max subsets, put it to two. You can also set minimum subsets to two if you want. What this will do, as I think I've explained in previous lessons, is it will see 
how fast the velocities are. And if the velocities basically are such that they are moving across multiple voxels, uh, meaning the length of the velocity is, is bigger than the length of a given voxel, then it will say, uh, I should probably do a substep. So given how fast our velocities are usually moving in the sim, it's always pretty much going to choose the second to do the second substep. But that's what that is. So that is just going to be, I'm going to run that. And that should probably be it for our, our simulation stuff. But this time I'll call it substeps. And then we can compare all of uh, our progress after that and then move on to rendering. Okay, and here's the result of that sim, which as you can clearly see, no longer has that initial street problem anymore, nor do we see it you know, in any of the other spots like here and here that we had seen it. Uh, even over here, it's a much more detailed thing. We just don't see that kind of, you know, either staircasing or the strata look, stuttering, whatever you want to call it. There's lots of names for it because it's such a common thing. Uh, the one issue, though, is we kind of lost, I think, some of the detail in the front here. If we compare, let's say, the last frame here of the last thing we did with this here, we had more detail. I mean, it seems going to be like a little different no matter what every time, but uh, you know, we don't ever change anything anyway. But there's a noticeable loss, I think, of detail in the leading edge here. We used to have... I think more in before. Um, we didn't lose it because of the disturbance uh, control thing. We lost it, I have found in the past, and I don't really know why this is, but because of the substeps. So, what I would suggest is simply if we raised it to two substeps, as we did, to simply double the strength on the disturbance. So, that in mind, gonna kick it off once more. This time I'll say substeps <laughs> double disturbed. All that stuff. And, you know, in case you're wondering, yeah, see, they're all showing up in here. These are all of our cool smoke caches. But easy enough for us to just delete them when we want to. I mean, any given one of these, if I look at how big it is, 6.2 gigs, whatever, you know. I mean, before, you could multiply this by 7 or 8 for the uncompressed versions of it. it. Would have been a whole different story. All these together are only putting a 36, 33 gigs instead of like 250 gigs. So, I mean, you get it. So, let's run that with the higher disturbance and hopefully we get some of that, uh, that detail back in the front. All right. And that's all done now. And we can see that indeed, doubling the disturbance has gotten us back to where we wanted to be. So now I would say, full stop, everything looks great now. At least as near as we can tell in this, you know, flip book. But um, way more, way more detail down here now. Uh, as usual, we can actually look in here between the two of them. So here we are like on the last frame or so. And then we go back to this one, and you can see how much like kind of smoother everything was. So yeah, great. So let's actually talk about uh, how we're going to render this now.